Okay, for problems 53 through 58, you really need to remember what a function is. So I wrote down the definition of a relation. If you remember with a relation, we talked about a relation is a set of all points, and a function then is a relation in which each x is paired to exactly one y. You may want to write that down so that you can review that before the test. So when you're looking at these points, we have, you know, a group of points. It's, it's going to be a relation then, so you can rule out B and D. Uh, then also, it's, is it a function? Well, is each X paired to exactly one Y? Look at your X values. Basically, guys, do any of them, are they all unique? If any of the X values repeat, it is not a function. So negative 3 goes to 5, 3 goes to negative 7, 7 goes to negative 15, and 9 goes to negative 19. None of the x values repeat. All of the x values are paired to exactly one y, so this is both a relation and a function. Let me give you an example of where it wouldn't be a function. If I added on one more point and I had 3 comma 4, now you can see that the 3x, the x being 3, would repeat and they have different y values, so that would not be a function, okay? If the x values repeat, it is not a function. But this case, all the x values are unique. They are each paired to exactly one y. 53 is a relation and a function. Okay, 54, which of the following tables represents a function? Well, again, same thing. What is the definition of a function? Each x is paired to exactly one y. You may want to write that down. So look for your x values and see if any of them repeat. We want to know which is a function. So they should all have unique x's. X is pair, negative 12 is paired to 22. Negative 8 is paired to 20. 0 is paired to 22. Uh-oh, negative 8 is also paired to 21. So negative 8 is not paired to exactly one y value. This is not a function. Look at B. Are all the x values unique? Yes. The y values can repeat. That's okay. These can both be paired to the same y. But the x values all have to be different. They are. So b would be a function. Let's check the other ones just to make sure. Here in c, you can see that negative 12 has two different y values. And in d, 0 has two different y values. So these are not functions. A function means that each x is paired to exactly one y. Number 55 then, find the domain of this function. So they're telling you it's a function. What is the domain? You need to remember that the domain is the x values. So I want to know what I'm allowed, basically, what are you allowed to put in for x? Think about that. What numbers can be in there? The graph can also help you. But looking at the equation first, I just think, okay, well, can I put in negative numbers? Am I allowed to square a negative number? Yeah, that, I could do that. That would work. So negative numbers are allowed. Can I put in positive numbers? Yeah, I mean, I could have a positive 4 squared or a positive 20 squared, and then I would have this negative on the outside, plus 5. I would still get an answer. I could still do it. So positive numbers work. Are you allowed to put in 0? Well, try it. 0 squared is 0. Negative 0, that is just 0. Plus 5 would give me 5. I can solve it. So there's no limitations on what you can put in for x. X is your all real numbers. You can also look at this on the graph. Remember that the domain or the x values are this axis here. So basically what you're looking for, guys, is no matter where you are on that pink line, could you trace up or down to one point on the graph? So if x is 1, is there a point on the graph where x is 1? Yeah, it's up here. When x is 1, y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When x is 2, there's a point. When x is 6.7, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then a little bit over, can I trace down, will there eventually be a point on this graph? Well, yeah, this parabola is expanding out, so eventually it'll get there. I may not see it, but there is a point on the graph. Same thing with the negatives. Can I try negative 2 and a half? Negative 1, negative 2 and a half, there's a point. What about negative 4? I can trace down until I hit that point. What about negative 10? Eventually, there will be a point somewhere because it will continue on. So there are no limitations. 
for the x values. The domain is all real numbers. Well, what is range then? Range is the y values or the outputs. Remember the input is x, the range is, or the output is y. So what is the range of the data set? You're just listing out all the y values that they give you. All of these should be written in a set. So it's not the x values, it has to be these values right here. It's c as your range. Number 57, what, which graph shows y as a function of x? Remember what function is. When you're looking at a graph, a function, um, a way you can tell if something is a function is try the vertical line test. So write that down so that when you're looking over this, you can study from it. Try the vertical line test. What that means is you have to try drawing a vertical line all the way across the graph. If it ever touches more than once, it is not a function. So if it only ever touches at one point, it is a function, at most one point. So start with this first graph. We want to know which one is a function. You can draw a vertical line here, just touches once, okay? Keep going over then. Draw vertical lines all the way across the graph. Only touches once, only touches once. Right here is going to be a problem. Take a look at that. You have two filled in circles. It touches twice, therefore, this is not a function. It only has to happen one time for it to not be a function. Try B. Really, on B, when you draw a vertical line, you can see that it's going to touch more than once on many of the points. That's enough to tell you this is not a function as well. Try D. Same thing, it's touching it more than once. This is not a function, which leaves you C. Take a look at it. Look at it. Passes, passes. You have to go all the way across. This might be where you're worried about it. But if you look, this is an open circle, which means that number doesn't really count there. It goes up to 2 without filling in 2. And then this is a closed circle, so it only actually touches once. Keep going. Only crosses once. Only crosses once. You can see you go the whole way over. C is the function because it passes the vertical line test. Well, let's try another one, but we're wording it. Um, we're looking at another one, but we're looking at the range. The graph of the function is shown below. Which value is not in the range? What is the range again? It's the y values. So which y value is not a part of this graph? You need to remember that filled in includes those values. Open does not include those. So let's check them. Zero, well, is there a point on this graph when y is zero? So go to the y-axis, go to zero, and then trace over until you hit your line. So I can go either way, but I'm going to hit my line over here. So right here at this point, y does equal zero. This point would be negative eight. 0, but that is in the range. Okay, we'll try the next one. What about 3? Go up to 3 on your y-axis. 1, 2, 3. Trace over until you hit your graph. This is an open circle. So what is that telling you? That's telling you that y does not equal 3. That point is not part of the graph. I'm thinking b will be our correct answer. Let's check the other ones just to make sure. Look for 4. Trace up to 4. Oh yeah, there's lots of points where y is 4. Look at all those points. So that is definitely in the range. A was in the range. And let's try that last one. Try 5. 2, 4, 5. We can trace over. This point is filled in. That means that y is also, the y equals 5 is also in the range. This point would be 2 comma 5. So y can be 5. A, C, and D are all in the range. B is not in the range. So B is your correct answer.